All right, our next speaker is um, from UCR, um, and they're here to talk to us about what dining is doing um, to make sustainable alternative proteins for our students. Well, um, thank you for uh, inviting us, and uh, actually, I brought um, Matt Burke as well. And, uh, I'm going to take over that, so um, we'll share some of the slides. Uh, but we're going to talk about our blended burger project. It's a very, it's a very exciting collaboration between UCR Dining Services, uh, the campus uh, uh, procurement services, and then our suppliers, and uh, bringing this product to campus and the first place students. Hello, everybody. So, uh, as Gustavo had mentioned, uh, you know, with any of these these initiatives or, or ideas or, or uh, uh, opportunities, it's always collaboration. That's the key. Um, we can have great ideas, but if we can't work the, the program through the, uh, you know, the, the different chains, such as the supply chain and through uh, the, the, the staff training, uh, it, it won't um, uh, come to fruition. So. You know, basically, the, the, the challenge was is, is how, how can we stay committed to uh, this type of uh, uh, sustainable uh, procurement and uh, lead to a uh, you know, better environment and healthier lifestyle. So, uh, so basically, uh, UCR Dining is part of the Menus of Change University Research Collaborative, and, and it was formed about five years ago. It started through the Culinary Institute of America and what had, had happened is it kind of branched off uh, as a collaboration between Harvard Culinary School and Stanford. And basically the um, research collaborative challenges the uh, development of uh, healthy and sustainable food products. And all of the members in, in this collabor collaborative have uh, attempted different types of, of ways of, of you know, using less, less uh, you know, beef products. Um, more sustainable, less water. And this example uh, of, of what they tried is called the protein flip. And there's a lot of barriers when, whenever you develop a new product, because when you, uh, you know, purchase hamburgers at the grocery store, you know, there were frozen patties. Those uh, patties were shipped from a dis dis distributor, um, and then it was you know, processed in a factory, and it was grown um, on the farms that you saw in the earlier presentations. So that supply chain is already there, and the cost is uh, relatively low as opposed to developing a new product. So when you bring a new product into play, such as the, the uh, mushroom blend burger, which is part of the UCR protein book project, you have a lot of opportunities with labor where you have to train the, the new staff on how to uh, produce the product, how to make the product, um, how to store it. There's also going to be a cost factor. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be more money because now you're, you're taking products that may not be in the uh, supply chain um, or, or as uh, we say economies of scale aspect it's going to be more expensive to uh, develop it and then there's the sourcing side which we've mentioned uh, mis then there's misconceptions too i mean trying to get people like uh, earlier to, to eat crickets i mean that's a you know in this country that's a big that's a big step i mean i i'll be frank i saw that picture of the the cricket in front of the, the, the person's mouth and i, I cringed a bit but um Product actually isn't bad once once you uh, uh, you know get past the cultural side of it and uh, understand that we, we really don't have a have a choice in the future. Um, anybody know how many people are on our planet right now? This this audience probably does five billion. Is it more? Any other? Seven point four. Well, there you go. Seven point four. So yeah, you're right. Um, and what about the, the projection? You know, the year of 2050, do you know what they, the estimated amount of people? Yeah, nine, nine to 10 billion. So, you know, where we're going, we, we have to find alternative ways to, to, uh, to uh, so, you know, source food. And the, uh, the burger, it, it, I guess the analogy for the, 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 the mushroom burger is, 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 is like this. Back in, in the 90s, General Motors had a car called the EV1. It was an all electric car. Well, it was a really cool car, but it just wasn't, uh, you know, we weren't ready for something like that. So it kind of disappeared, uh, you know, from, from the, uh, 
from the radar. Uh, today we have a lot of electric vehicles on the market, but before the electric vehicles were you know, prevalent, we had hybrids, hybrid technology, uh, cars that use battery and they use gasoline. And that's kind of the way I look at the blended bird. It's almost a hybrid product that can help us bridge to the future of maybe uh, all uh, mushroom or all, you know, crickets or uh, insects and, or, or algae, which is, is amazing. So uh, that, that's basically what, what this, uh, this burger is going <coughs> to do. So when UCR developed this burger, they had used uh, uh, an in-house program to, to develop it and uh, make it so it's it's a product that's made from uh, sauteed mushrooms it has, has a recipe sauteed mushrooms and olive oil and then they create a paste and they grind it with uh, the beef product and they were serving about 160 pounds a week in the in the retail restaurant which is about um i don't know uh, what well, actually it's 40 pounds of beef on 160 patties so there's four four pounds per burger and they wanted to mass produce it so what they did was uh you know, they tried to to find a way. Uh, how do we how do we do this if we don't have a distribution line uh, set up? So the, the the challenge was replicate the burger at the market uh, using the fresh mushrooms, the fresh beef, and the consistent quality. Uh, try to keep the labor cost down as much as possible, and provide a you know hamburger flavor for for everyone who who tries it to 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 know that it's you know, it's a it's a burger with mushroom mixed in, not a mushroom burger. So uh, they, you know, they found in the research that the 70-30 uh, percentage of mixtures is the best blend uh, that, that provides the, the most uh, flavor of, of the burger without as much mushroom flavor. And by the way, adding uh, that 30% of the mushroom does add 88% 80, more fiber, so it's already a more healthy product. This uh, up here is a, the recipe I wanted to show you, it, 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 not to to go over line by line, I just wanted to show the complexity of how this, uh, you know, this isn't just where you grind up mushrooms and, and mix it in beef and throw it on grills. Actually, there, there's a process to it, and that's the labor side, and that's the training side. And that, that was the biggest challenge, is how do we do this? So the, um, the way we did it was through the collaboration piece. UCR Dining had worked with UCR Procurement, and then we brought in UCOP, the food commodity manager, uh, his name's Eric, who had a background in, in airline uh, catering. And he had a lot of connections in the industry, which led us to meet with a uh, food producer in LA called Gourmet Foods. And, and basically what Gourmet Foods did is they were able to make the mushroom mix for us and provide that and ship it off to the meat uh, packing facility who actually would take take the beef and the mushroom mix and, and, and form it into the patties that we needed. So it, it created a new supply chain. And then from there, it was shipped to our distributor, Cisco Foods, who would then ship it to us. So it was this collaborative effort that provided this, this burger. And uh, in the end, um, what we did was we were buying the beef through the, the distributor who was, was bringing it in from the out of state. And we further enhanced that program by finding a local beef supplier that was in Central California, and that was through another another collaborative program. So now we we've taken a burger that uses less greenhouse gases, less beef, less water, and we're sourcing it uh, locally within 500 miles. So now we have a, a fully sustainable product, which is which is really exciting. And in the end, uh, this is what the the finished product uh, came out and shipped out as uh, you know, 10 pound cases and uh, 40 patties. So it cooks very well. It's um, it's available through our, our distributor Cisco, and other schools were hoping that as they show an interest in, in finding a product that's already um, you know, being being produced on a, on a mass scale, that they can um, also buy the product and help drive the cost down. And so this mushroom blended burger was uh, was served up in today, so you mm -hmm. enjoyed it. So when we uh, when we launched uh, you know this this little burger, um, uh, we had a rich dietitian uh, do the analysis and figure out what all the best dietary benefits of it are. You know, uh, less calories per burger, less fat, uh, but you get more fiber. So it was all in all just a much better product than just eating a regular burger by itself. 
So uh, we, we started serving this product in, in our residential restaurants um, and kind of waited to see if we got any feedback from students that they noticed the difference, that they weren't eating a regular burger. Because we put a poster, but students sometimes they don't look at those. So they just go to, you know, they're in a hurry, they gotta get the class, they will get the burger, they eat it. And we thought, are they noticing any difference? And so we started asking students, we surveyed 150 and said, hey, uh, did you know that you just ate a mushroom with burger? And we're like, I don't know. Did you, you know, did you notice a difference in the taste? They said they had not noticed any difference. So um, we thought, wow, okay, so uh, at least, you know, we got the right blend. Like, there's not a noticeable difference that people might say, you know, it's not the, what I'm used to, so why are you changing my burger? Right? Um, so we asked them, well, did you actually like it? And 88% um, of them said they did, uh, that they enjoyed the taste, which is very positive. Um, Sixty-five percent of them were unaware that it was a lemon burger, even though we had the big poster. Um, and then um, we asked them, well, "Did you know why this burger is better? Not only is it better for you, but also better for the client?" They didn't know, so we started educating them and told them that you know each each time they chose a blended burger versus the uh, regular burger, they were saving the equivalent of a bathtub full of water. You know about uh, 30 gallons um, and so when they noticed when they learned about it they were really excited they were uh, um, uh, excited to learn that with just a small choice like that they can make such a huge impact and this was especially uh, when we were doing this uh, survey was at the height of the california drought so it was high in people's minds at the time that we had to do something about this drought um, and so they were very impressed by that. And uh, so we looked at, okay, what would be the potential of VCR dining services only served with blended burger. Every time we had it on the menu, just do a blended burger. So we learned that uh, we serve about 88,000 burgers a year um, based on our menu cycles. And so the potential savings in terms of uh, gallons of water, 2.5 million, I mean, that's huge. Uh, enough to fill, you know, four Olympic uh, swimming pools. Um, and then as far as the, uh, uh, environmental impact, you know, it's like taking 10 to 11 cars off the road permanently. And then um, for the equivalent of uh, uh, emissions for producing 127 megawatts of electricity, um, which is enough to power 12 homes for a year. So just a small change like that on one ingredient that is certainly a huge impact. So, um, yeah. That's it. We're really excited about this uh, product and uh, hoping you enjoyed it. And uh, uh, we'd like to repeat that comment as well.